When it comes to performance, like anything, it really certainly is vendor specific. How do they manage performance, right? Uh, what are the differences? And so there's a couple ways at looking at performance um, when it comes to storage volumes, external storage volumes with vSphere. One is what can that array offer for a volume perspective? Or what kind of performance can it push? Is it tied to spindles? Is it tied to cache? Are there limitations at scale? Right, that's one part of it. The other part of it, how's que how queuing works and queue depth limits, and how much VMware can push to a specific device. Um, VMware now can really open things up quite significantly from a queue perspective. So that's not really a problem anymore. So it really comes down to the array architecture. Uh, so from a flash array perspective, um, our volumes are tied to the array. And so if you have one volume, it can consume and offer up the full performance of the array itself. It's not tied to cache or controller CPUs or something like that. It's, it's tied to the array. So if the host can push it, that volume can take it. And so on a, from a pure perspective, is there a direct benefit around that from moving from VMFS to VVOLS? No, I would say no. Uh, it's pretty much the same performance because paralyzing volumes on us doesn't really get you anything. At very high levels from a QDEP perspective, like maybe, but we're talking some serious, serious, serious workloads for that really to make a fundamental difference. Um, I, I would say the biggest thing around performance when it comes to pure and, and provisioning um, is just virtual disks, right? Um, on VMFS, there's a variety of different options and there's trade-offs across the board, depending on which one you choose. On VVOLs on pure, it's always thin, it's always full performance. It's basically like using a raw device mapping. Um, uh, it's much, much, much better. Um, but from a performance perspective, it's pretty much the same thing. It's a direct volume up to that guest. Uh, and so there are less decisions to make when provisioning that storage when it comes to performance profiles. Um, VMFS itself, the bottleneck is wherever the bottleneck happens to be. If that's in the VMware layer, if that's on the array layer, no different with essentially with VVOLs. Some vendors I know actually do get uh, enhancements, right? If they paralyze their volumes, they can push more performance. So it's one of those things you certainly have to talk to your vendor, um, but performance is not really generally the angle I push. What I, one of, really the main thing I discuss when talking about the use cases around VVOLs is, hey, I wanna be able to use my arrays features at the level of my application. Right. A, a super common example of this is SQL Server. I have SQL databases and I have it on my E drive, which is this virtual disk. And I don't use VMFS because I want to be able to quickly restore and snapshot and clone and replicate that particular virtual disk. And so traditionally, the best way to do that is to use raw device mappings, which gets the job done. It's a direct volume, but then you lose a lot of VMware goodness and it's just a pain across the board around management and provisioning. VVOLS gives you that same benefit, all the VMware integration, the storage policies, but that direct volume access on the array. So all those features, all those um, uh, instant snapshots that we offer, all that type of stuff that restore very large databases, clone them across the board. That's been the killer use case um, for our customers around VVOLS is really, really slick copy data management. And recently we released uh, our our S, uh, SQL Server Management Studio integration for VVOLs as well to, to kind of continue driving that further up the application layer when we're looking at VVOLs.